Evacuations are underway. Some schools are closed and neighbors are left picking up the pieces and drying out after towns in the area are inundated by floodwaters. Last night's thunderstorms brought several inches of rain to the area in a very short time. And as we saw, several area communities are dealing with major flooding tonight. Well, Hopefully no more eight-inch downpours. Yeah. That's incredible. That'd be nice. All right, Katie, thank you very much. Terrible situation and long-lasting for a lot of people. Yeah, just devastating. Well, also tonight, the Freeborn County Sheriff's Office responded, as we told you last night, to a 911 call about shots being fired at Myrie Big Island. When they arrived on the scene, they found a man had died after being shot twice in the head. We told you earlier this week that negotiations with Mayo and the union representing many of those workers are underway. Today, dozens of people are rallying in the hopes that Mayo reconsiders the decision. Well, what we're all hoping is that your forecast changed from about uh, 15 minutes ago when you first delivered it and there's no more rain. <laughs> I was going to say, do you just want sunshines all the way that through? That would be wonderful. We have a breaking situation to tell you about tonight. In Freeborn County, law enforcement and emergency responders have converged on Myrie Big Island State Park. All right, AJ, thank you very much. Now, before we go, we want to update you on the breaking news that we told you about earlier in the show. A heavy law enforcement and emergency responder presence at Myrie Big Island State Park in Freeborn County. We have a, a late night shooting at a state park and a claim of self-defense. Now a man is charged with second degree murder. We have a major update to last night's breaking news coming right up. First, though, tonight, a huge amount of water in a very short amount of time. Team coverage of the effects of the flooding situation tonight, but it isn't just damaged property and evacuated homes. One man has lost his life. Well, if you were waiting for a break in the heat and humidity, today was your day. If you weren't ready to say goodbye to that warm weather, this might be your week. Meteorologist Brandon Libby is in the Storm Team 3 Forecast Center. As much as I like to feel, feel that bit of a chill in the air this weekend, it, it's a little sad. You don't want to say goodbye to the summer yet. Well, there may be a helpful smile in every aisle at Hy-Vee, but one local Hy-Vee employee's smile stands out. Scott Herter is the manager of store operations at the Crossroads location in Rochester. Today, he was surprised by coworkers and family with the Hy-Vee Legendary Customer Service Award. It's the company's highest honor. You may have gotten notice of Saturday's Amber Alert on your phone or seen it on TV, but despite the alert, this case ended in the worst way. Five-year-old Elena Ertel was found dead in northern Minnesota, 150 miles from the Watkins home where she was kidnapped. Now 26-year-old Zachary Anderson of Monticello is in jail for the crime. He's being held on charges of first-degree murder and kidnapping. Ertel was the daughter of one of Anderson's co-workers, and he was considered a family friend. Testimony is underway in a North Iowa murder trial, and today the first officer to respond to the scene took the stand. Ronald Rand is charged with first-degree murder in the December shooting death of his girlfriend. The defense says this shooting was accidental, and they want the charge reduced to manslaughter. KIMT News 3's Emily Boster takes us into the courtroom. So quite a situation to deal with today. We also got word that Highway 9 east of Osage, which had to close down due to rising waters, did reopen late this afternoon. That comes from the Department of Transportation. That was around 4.30 that that opened up again. So when you see just how much rain that our area received, you will see easily why the flooding hit so many areas so hard. Chief Meteorologist Tyler Roney has a look at the rainfall totals in the Storm Team 3 Forecast Center now. It was one of the worst tornadoes ever to hit our area, but 133 years later now, it's more known for what it created than what it destroyed. We begin tonight with a developing situation in Mason City. Officers are searching for a motorcycle rider who was chased at high speeds through several Mason City streets this evening. We have a reporter on the scene of where it is believed that bike was found in downtown Mason City, but so far it does not appear that a rider has been caught. But we will follow this and update you on this as we can. First though tonight, it is back to school season. Albert Lee, Northwood, Kansas, Forest City, Clear Lake, just a few of the schools in our area with classes starting up this week. That means you are going to be seeing a lot of school buses on the roads these days. In Iowa, a law stiffening the penalties for driving around to stop school bus has been in effect for four years. But is it working? KIMT News 3's Emily Boster is taking a look. <laughs> so we also get gold medal for number of medals. Yes, basically. <laughs> we just basically won the Olympics, right? I guess? We did, yeah, I guess you could say that. And I, I helped them out a lot. I cheered them on. <laughs> Sammy, now it's time to take another look at the top five stories in our top five at five. This morning, a development agreement with Prestige Foods of Iowa was voted on by the Wright County Board of Supervisors. The plan was unanimously approved by the three members. It means ground could be broken on a $240 million pork processing facility near Eagle Grove as soon as next spring. A similar proposal was brought in front of the Mason City City Council, but was eventually rejected.
Today, jury selection is taking place in the Ronald Rand trial. Rand is accused of shooting and killing 51-year-old Michelle Key at his home in Hampton last December. The police say Rand and Key were romantically involved and had been arguing the night of her death. We will have a reporter in the courtroom for opening statements, which are expected to begin tomorrow morning. Police in Rochester responded to a report of shots fired over the weekend. They believe uh, an apartment was the target. Four people were inside that apartment at the time, including three children, but nobody was hurt. Bullet holes were found, though, and officers say two bullets did make their way inside the building. Another case Rochester police are looking into involves a very expensive boat. Investigators say River Valley Power and Sport reported a boat and trailer with a total value of $100,000 was taken just after 11 Friday night. There is a surveillance video of this, but anybody with information is asked to contact police. Meanwhile, in Iowa, the State Patrol Division of Criminal Investigation and Des Moines Police Department are working to determine what led to a stabbing that happened at the Iowa State Fair on the very last day of the fair. An 18-year-old male from Des Moines was taken to the hospital. No word yet on his condition. Here's Tyler now with a last look at the forecast.